All right, guys, another lazy day, another lazy dollar. We 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 we're just gonna sit back with a drink, uh, bring up Buzzfeed or something, and then respond to one of those interminable white milk bread toast articles they have about something or other. What are we gonna get? It could be anything. Let's spin the wheel. The top ten mistakes that novice writers tend to make. Ugh. I suppose you'll do. You're frightfully ugly, but but but, but you'll do on a pinch. On that note, I'll put you in touch with my guy. The guy who did my intro cartoon. He'll draw you something that's not pish. His name's Jake... Ah. Because I see videos around constantly discussing what to do and what not to do. But none of them actually get into some of the things that bother me about amateur writers. Me, 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 me. Me. Me, me. Me, 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 me. I mean, you used the word me. Ridiculous. Number one, writing longhand using an entire stick of butter. Oh, for God's sake, this is so typical. I, I've never written anything with butter in my entire life. And I can say with certainty that it has nothing to offer. Yeah, ignorant hick. I'm telling you, when, when the butter wars happen, Followed by the I can't believe it's not genocide, you'll... Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. No agent or publisher is going to want to read a manuscript that's written in butter. It's not written in the butter, you ignoramus. It's some kind of tablet from ancient Gaul. Any markings you put on room temperature butter, and butter should be at room temperature, any markings you scribe onto it will be melted away in moments like the adventurous but naive messages written into wet beaches by impulsive tourists during neap tide. No, you, you write with butter by applying the butter to another surface, such, such as any given paper that will darken in tone and stay dark even after drying. I mean, you weren't even trying, were you? Not only is butter supposed to be refrigerated in order to maintain its shape, and, I, and I'm supposed to take advice from you regarding butter, am I? Really? Refrigerated. We bloody refrigerate. If you were here right now, you'd get both sides of my least fluffy glove, young man. You refrigerate butter only for the sake of storage. Butter you intend to use should be kept, uh, as I quite conspicuously already told you, at room temperature. I mean, for heaven's sake, do you know anything about dairy products? I, I bet you put cheese in the freezer, don't you? Because you can't freeze cheese. I'll tell you now, you cannot freeze cheese. You cannot freeze cheese. Do you, do you even know how to drink milk properly? I bet you don't, do you? I bet you, I bet you drink sour milk rather than the carton, don't you? Yeah, da dairy retard. Dairy retard. That's the thing you are, it's dairy retard. I bet, I bet you can't even throw milkshakes properly. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll be first against the wall, you, you vashist. Vash is French for cows, fascists, you're dairy fascist. no one appreciates me. Oftentimes there's just so much butter on the paper that it absorbs into the paper and it gets all soggy. Oh, well, that never hap that never happens with a, with a pen, does it? That never happens, never happens with a, never happens with a pen. Shut up. It's also difficult mechanically because as you work your hand and wrist writing, you warm up the butter and it starts to melt, making it even more difficult to write that final draft. Yeah, genius. I suppose the best temperature at which to use a ballpoint pen must surely be minus 32 or something, so that it doesn't... <laughs> Who ever heard of a pen that uses liquid? Look, mate, do you realize how soft graphite is? I, we, we, I know we refer to pencil lead as pencil lead, because once upon a time people thought lead would make the best pencil, but they changed it fairly swiftly to graphite. You know why? Because lead is hard and graphite is extremely soft. Now go ahead and put two and two together for me. Would a substance even softer surely not be the logical progression from that? Like, try to see the future, dude. It's not difficult. Number two, asking your pets for writing advice. Aha, we've got another guy who hates dogs, everyone. Why do you hate dogs? I remember when I was a young gun in the authoring scene, and when I would run out of ideas and hit that notorious writer's block, I would walk up to my cat and ask him whether he thinks there's too much exposition in the first chapter, and whether it captures his attention. 
And you said this in English, did you? Rather than in cat. Like any like any decent person would at least attack. Yeah, typical American. All you can think of is shouting louder and louder in that simplified bastardization of the English language you have. You didn't even bother to learn the local cat language. And now you're telling me they're the ones who can't come up with ideas and solutions. Yeah, bloody Trump voters. Go away. Or, or, or something along the lines of go home or go back or worse to that effect, but not really. But over time, eventually you come to find out that your pets aren't capable of learning the English language. Unless, of course, you have a parrot, but then all of their criticisms will be derivative. Yeah, only because the drivel you feed them is derivative. It, it, give a parrot something original and it might actually feel like having a jam. Number three. Eating other books to try and absorb the talents of other writers. Oh! 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 <laughs> so, and yet you're perfectly on board with, with eating other carcasses to try and absorb the fat reserves of other animals. Yeah! yeah Anti-vegan hypocrite. I want to punch you. I just want to punch you in the face over and over again with reinforced gloves. Then you'll understand why I need more power. This cannot be more false. In fact, it is entirely mythical that digesting someone's book will grant you their writing abilities. If it's entirely mythical, then it can be more false. A myth may be less true than a legend, but it's still more true than a flat-out falsehood. Something can be entirely mythical and therefore be less false even than something that is 99% mythical and 1% false. You haven't done the math, sir. You haven't done the kind of math that I think is necessary. Human beings actually lack the enzymes necessary to digest paper in the first place. Then what happened to all those acid tabs I ate? Uh, I, I couldn't digest them, so I suppose they just crystallized in my spinal fluid or something. And, and yeah, th there you go, Mr. Smarty Pantaloons. What if you write a book using acid instead of ink? You wouldn't be able to read it, but I put it to you that... Eating a book written in acid would indeed pass on all of the wisdom that it took to write it. Hang on, i just got to try something. Approximately ten hours later. You were wrong, bro! <laughs> you were dead wrong! <laughs> so, something about octopuses, right? Octopuses with guns? It doesn't matter. Doesn't work. Everyone in the industry knows this already, so don't embarrass yourself by trying. Oh, everybody in the industry. Is that right, Mr. I speak for everybody in the industry? Well, it's obviously not the case, is it? I'm part of this industry and I didn't know that at all. Who's the idiot now, eh? Who's the idiot now? Number four, naming every single character in your novel the same name. God, so reactionary. Well, what's, what skin off your nose is if, if I... You know what? Carry on. I'm going to let you talk. I believe in free speech, unlike you fascist. <laughs> it occurs to me, like, how, how many, like, millennial social justice warriors have even watched The Young Ones? Do have a butcher's, lads, and you might want to get on the task of posthumously me doing Rick Mail for something or other, since he's some kind of time lord who's been brutally mocking that exact archetype since ten years before you all were even conceived. Anyway, sorry. Character. <laughs> For example, here's a section of dialogue just to show how befuddled this can make the reader. Hello, Paul Smith, said Paul Smith to Paul Smith. Why, hello there, Paul Smith, replied Paul Smith to Paul Smith. How is the weather today, Paul Smith asked Paul Smith. See what I mean? And why Paul Smith? Why not Mbala? Have you seen what happens if you name every character Mbala? No, you haven't. It never even crossed your mind, did it, you racist Bigotlet. Of course, Paul Smith isn't going to work in that context because Paul Smith is not a diverse name. Duh. It's a white male Anglo-Saxon name. I mean, if you could pull your, your, your racist Trump voting thumb out of your ass for a second and maybe use a name that is diverse, like Mala, you would then maybe you wouldn't encounter these problems of yours. I'm glad I could, I could be here to help you grow into a better person. Number five. Never eating any of the guacamole I made for the party. I adored your guacamole. I said so.
This is one of my biggest pet peeves. No, 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 no. If you won't even listen to me when I compliment you, then I don't know where this relationship is going. And once everybody's getting up to leave, I notice that the bowl is filled to the fucking brim and the stuff has already started to turn brown because nobody ate it. I'll have you know I left it because I was being polite. That was the best guacamole I ever had. I would, if I had my way, I would have licked the bowl dry and then drank its period blood, but I didn't. Guacamole is a dish to be shared. So I didn't want to be the guy who finished it off and deprived everyone else. I mean, honestly, you try and be polite and this is what you get. Do, do you know how much sleep I lost thinking about the guacamole I didn't get to eat? I was up all night tossing over that guacamole. Number six, highway soliciting. Okay, this is a big one. Many writers have a difficult time breaking into the business because they just don't know who to contact. And that's a completely understandable thing. No, it isn't. I don't understand it. So it can't be completely understandable. <laughs> you are so stupid. Which I can tell because I understand it less than you. Standpoint, baby. I learned this the hard way. Don't ever try this method of selling your words. I've only seen it work a couple of times, and it was only during intense traffic during rush hour. Right, well, that makes it... Hang on. That makes it about 163 times more promising than simply sending your book to a publisher. Unless you're already some kind of internet celebrity with enough pre-existing clout to whet the appetite of said publisher and act as sort of collateral PR currency for what is essentially a financial loan. Those of you without a media presence of any kind can go ahead and continue to write your manuscripts and expect better results by highway soliciting on the lip of an active volcano. Sorry, yeah. character. <laughs> Number seven, not having a word quota. I do. Q U O T A. It's right there. What? I don't even know what you're. What is wrong with you? Are you a crazy? Are you? Are you an insane? Before my writing is done for the day, I will have written the word tumultuous at least fifteen times. No more, no less. Yeah, in the margins. One after the other, <laughs> written in your own blood. Just tumultuous, 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 tumultuous. You read too much Bukowski, clearly. Why don't you, why don't you try the word delightful 15 times a day? Or, 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 or scrumptious, or twee, or, 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 or lavender. Number eight, committing numerous violent felonies. Oh, God, how many times must I go over this? It wasn't a real felony because he's not a real journalist. Yeah, he, he just writes hate pieces for, for some garbage human magazine. And that hairdresser wasn't a hairdresser either. She was a fascist provocateur with scissors. And it's not illegal to kill a hooker if she's wearing a MAGA hat. Even if you make her wear it. I'm sure everyone is tired of hearing it by now, but breaching the law of the land by inflicting harm upon other innocent members of the community is possibly one of the worst things you can do when it comes to finishing your first book. Look! My milkshake contains quick-drying cement and battery acid. That, that means it's, it's just a really, really good joke. Oh my god, it's the language police coming to come take away our freedom of fluid mechanics. Shrek, Shrek, make you go away, Shrek. Not only will you be spending too much time tracking your victim's daily habits and learning forensic countermeasures, but you'll probably be caught eventually, be found guilty in a court of law by a jury of your peers, Go to prison for multiple decades or your entire life or get the death penalty. And guess what? All of that time is time that could be spent writing. Well, is anyone going to act surprised at this callous erasure of the female experience? Is, is anyone going to entertain the fluttering of a quarter of the muscles in their left eyebrow over the shocking eventuality that our hero here has bigotedly neglected to even factor in what happens to women? Does it even cross your mind for a moment the plight of the female criminal? Who, who, who can indeed be far too woefully scatterbrained to get away with a felony and will, never, and will nevertheless never even be arrested for it, let alone charged as much as those straight white men with whom we grant the privilege of prison agency? But, but, but no, to you the world is just a, just a vast plain of penises. From horizon to horizon, just dicks upon dicks within dicks, dicking each other over with a toxic dickitude. Ne ne never once sparing a thought for the women who drift through their whole lives like a poltergeist, never being held accountable no matter how many lives they ruin and end. 
Why don't you piss baby shut up until you've walked a mile in my bra? Number nine, spending quality time with friends and family. God! You, I don't know where you're going with this or what angle to take, so I'm just going to play the race card. I happen to have a race card. I, I was mistaken for a Spaniard once. So that means I have I, I have a race card and I can play it any time I want for any reason. I had a couple of Jewish ones, but they get revoked as soon as people see how tall I am. Anyway, d d race card. I win. S stick that in your pipe and smoke it, mister. I've never been mistaken for anything south of Estonia. Miss a turn. And last but certainly not least, number 10. Plagiarism. Now, I want to be very clear. Clear is a homological word. Just saying. Or, or autological, if you're uh, afraid of fags or something. It is okay to borrow quotes and things like that if you give proper credit. And even building off of other writers' ideas is okay and pretty encouraged. Even the most famous authors that wrote all of the classics that we enjoy had inspirations. But this is the internet, where you can ape off someone else's channel and within a few months be bigger than they ever were or ever will be. J just because of some kind of charisma or something? Just because, just because you say things better than me, you think you're better than me or something? Oh, oh, oh look at me, I'm vernaculous. I haven't killed any hookers. I'm a good person. Yeah, We know you didn't actually write War and Peace. Everybody knows you didn't write it. The publisher knows it. The agent knows it. You can't just put War and Peace into a manila envelope and send it off to a publisher, all right? Oh, and it's the return of the language police. They're throwing some kind of triggered wobbler just because I said the words War and Peace. That's all I did. That's literally all I did. Just said, don't give me, don't give me that damage control about, 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 you were only explaining the ascertainable difference between Tolstoy's masterpiece and the hardback edition of the Teletubbies annual 2001. Bullshit! You were something, something Shrek just because War and Peace. Ah, oh, I need a vacation. Thank you so much for listening. Bugger off! And I hope you try to implement these tricks in your future writing career. Have a wonderful day. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a, yeah.